Yeah, so the purpose of this paper is really just to acknowledge that uh, the, the Journal of Business Venturing is now 30 years old. And I wanted to also thank Ian McMillan and Venkat as really the parents or the founders of the journal. And it's been an honour for me to be the editor-in-chief of JBB now for, well, I was an associate editor in 2005 and took over as editor-in-chief in 2009. So the purpose of this paper was really not to kind of celebrate the 30 years of, of JBB by offering a new distinctive domain of entrepreneurship, because there are, there are good ones that exist at the moment. But what I wanted to do was to, one, acknowledge that entrepreneurship is a timeless phenomenon. We know that John Baptist mentioned it in the, I think it was the 1800s, but also that it's timely, that we have a lot of grand challenges that exist at the moment in the world, and that entrepreneurship may actually recognise or be um, a potential tool for being able to address uh, those challenges. And so what I wanted to do was rather than create a new distinctive domain of entrepreneurship was to talk about what areas in which we can have vitality uh, for the field. Um, yeah, in this paper, I'm really focused more on the exploration side because my concern is that, and we know from industries and we know from, um, from other disciplines in the academic area, is that as we start to mature or as we start becoming more legitimate, we start becoming more conservative. We start focusing on exploitation and kind of making very incremental adjustments to our knowledge. And in doing so, we become more narrow and perhaps more boring um, and less vital. And what I wanted to do was to say entrepreneurship has been highly successful because it's been entrepreneurial. It's been pursuing um, exploration. It's been trying to break new ground. It's been open to different sorts of research questions, different theoretical approach different methods from different disciplines. And it's not just saying we're borrowing, I think we're, we're blending, we're bricolage, we're making a contribution back. But what's brought us here is that we've been highly exploratory, we've been highly entrepreneurial. And I just, in this paper, wanted to point out that, hey, we don't want to keep stopping, we want to keep being entrepreneurial. So the first domain that I was talking about is this kind of have a more interactive perspective. And I take that from the research on more a cognitive perspective that has looked at beliefs, you know, third person beliefs and first person beliefs, which is mainly focused on individuals' attributes and cognitive processes. And in that way, we've kind of really focused on well, what does the represent the opportunity in the mind of the entrepreneur, what their beliefs are. But of course, an opportunity doesn't exist just in the mind of the entrepreneur. It also exists out in the world. And as an entrepreneur starts to experiment and, and take the opportunity to the world, what I call an, a community of inquiry, then the opportunity itself changes. The opportunity is the opportunity changes. It may actually transform the community of inquiry and also change uh, what's happening in the entrepreneur's mind. So really, the under this perspective, um, it's not whether the opportunity exists in the mind of the entrepreneur or in the world. It actually exists between them. And so I think future research that will, will, will be exciting will be that that looks at the mutual adjustment that occurs of an opportunity in the mind and, and in the world. Right. So that's the, that's the first mode. The second mode really relates to um, kind of an activity-based approach. So we've done some work and we've done a lot of work on the notion of entrepreneurial action. And that seems to be highly important to the field of entrepreneurship. But what we look at is one entrepreneurial action pretty much as an event. Um, but an activity base really turns that around and say, well, what are the activities that lead up to that action and how are those activities related? So in some ways, we're kind of building or recognising the nascent entrepreneurship literature, which really doesn't talk about is a venture created or not, but talks about emergence in terms of a series of activities. So maybe we can do the same in many of the other areas of, of entrepreneurial action. What are the activities and how do they relate and why do they occur? How do they lead to an entrepreneurial action? And in doing so, I think we can start to build a micro foundation theory of entrepreneurial action by looking at these kind of activity based. We can really talk about it as experiencing, you know, going through this kind of practice uh, of entrepreneurship and all the series of activities that occur. Right? The other one really relates to uh, something being more cognitively hot. In other words, we've looked at how emotion, particularly positive emotion, can facilitate entrepreneurial action, but also how negative emotions can obstruct it. 
But there's another way to look at it too is, well, how does engaging an entrepreneurial task impact my emotions? For example, maybe by engaging in challenging a challenging entrepreneurial task, that this can actually generate uh, positive emotions as I do well. And or it could be as I engage in a challenging task and I don't seem to be doing well or making progress, it generates negative emotions. So recognizing that we've already looked at uh, how emotions impacts a task and now perhaps how a task can impact emotions, we can start to look at the reciprocal relationship between the two. And there we can look at spirals, positive spirals, what starts them, what perpetuates and what stops them, or negative spirals, what stops them, starts them, perpetuates them. Um, so that gives us a, a good basis for trying to explore more about the interrelationship between emotion and cognition in trying to understand entrepreneurial phenomena. The other one I'm really looking at is kind of compassion organising and pro-social motivation. And this really starts with the notion of entrepreneurial gain. Um, in the definitions of entrepreneurship, we've spoken about gain, but I think we can take a more liberal definition of what we mean by gain, not just purely economic gain. We can talk about uh, gain for the entrepreneur, we can talk about gain for others, and it doesn't necessarily need to be economic gain. So I think it's particularly interesting that, you know, entrepreneurship scholars want to do good, just like social entrepreneurs do. And that's why they're starting to try and study more about social entrepreneurship. I mean, what entrepreneurial actions can people engage in to help others alleviate suffering, help the natural environment uh, and things like that? Now, there's a strong literature from the positive organisational psychology literature about um, organising or compassion organising. But entrepreneurship has the ability to make a contribution here because we're not constrained by normal organisational routines. Actually, we're used to investigating the creation of new routines. We're not constrained by only looking at alleviating the suffering of people within an organisation. We can look at people outside organisations, perhaps before an organisation uh, even exists. Um, and we can also look at kind of this compassion venturing where we find that in the aftermath of, for example, a natural disaster, ventures are spontaneously created within hours or days to alleviate the suffering of other people, which actually makes a contribution back to entrepreneurship, where we think that this uh, organisational emergence can take months and even years. And here it's happening in hours uh, or within days. And part of being able to try and understand this compassion organising or who engages in it and who doesn't, this uh, compassion venturing, is this notion of pro-social motivation. And the nice thing about pro-social motivation is it doesn't just assume that you do it for the benefits of others, but that you may also be able to do it for the benefit of yourself. So we don't have to have, uh, you know, altruism necessarily. So I think pro-social uh, motivation or pro-social behaviour, um, along with compassion organising, in an entrepreneurial context, can really be a, a vital field where we can gain a deeper understanding of entrepreneurship, but also a deeper understanding of how to alleviate the suffering of others, uh, the saving of the natural environment, and a whole host of doing good outcomes. And I think that's a really exciting area uh, of entrepreneurship research. Yeah, in terms of practical implications, I mean, this paper is really about different areas that we can pursue in terms of research to increase the vitality of the field. So the practical implications are not so much for entrepreneurs or managers, but for actual scholars. And so that's really what I'm thinking about the practical implications are. So if we take it about what they should do, or these are the areas that we can go into, we can also think about it in terms of junior scholars or senior scholars. And the first one is I'm saying that we should be looking at highly novel or highly exploratory research. Um, and people might say, well, that's fine for someone to say, but, you know, I need to be able to get tenure. And I think a part of it has to do with your research strategy. I mean, there are some areas that you want to be able to be highly entrepreneurial, highly novel, and there are areas that you may actually choose to be a little bit more conservative, right? So we know that if you engage in things that are more entrepreneurial, you have a greater distribution of outcomes. More are going to be home runs, but also some are going to be strikeouts. Um, so create a portfolio of projects that you pursue, at least have some of them where you can pursue something that's highly novel, highly risky, highly quirky. Right? The other one is to make sure that we continue to think entrepreneurially. So be novel 
in terms of uh, the research questions, perhaps be novel in terms of the, the theories that we bring in or how we blend them or bricolage them together, um, be highly novel in our in our methods. And, and hopefully us as editors and reviewers uh, will also ma maintain that kind of entrepreneurial uh, spirit. Um, but also in, in line with the, the theme works, the, the themes that we had here was be highly interactive. So if you do come up with a research opportunity and it's in your mind, we know from this sort of research that what you need to do is you need to be able to share it with the community of inquiry. And it's through this community of inquiry that the opportunity actually starts to develop and perhaps becomes more plausible. But also in kind of publishing or um, communicating our theories, perhaps we also start to transform the community of inquiry. So again, our research papers as opportunities may exist not only in our mind and not only in the community, but kind of this mutual adjustment between them. So in some ways, the revise and review, revise and resubmit process is part of this mutual adjustment as the opportunity actually gets refined over time. But also, you know, this notion of um, emotion, perhaps we should choose topics that get us uh, that get us emotionally excited because that's going to give us the energy and we hear a lot about pursue your passion, pursue your passion. Um, but in this case, you know, maybe those projects that get you emotionally excited will also get other people emotionally excited, or at least will be reflected in the energy and the content of your studies. Um, but also, you know, I'm talking about that we might study more pro-social behaviour, is that we as, uh, as entrepreneurs want to do good to others. Um, scholars also often want to do good. And perhaps by studying those people who do good, either help alleviate other people's suffering or save the natural environment, or by studying people that do the opposite, do harm to other people and harm the natural environment, then we as scholars are kind of engaging in this kind of pro-social behaviour as well, which could be highly rewarding for us. So I suppose my practical implications for this paper are more for scholars to think about um, remaining entrepreneurial in the way that they do their research, acknowledging that there are risks, but there are ways to try and manage those risks. And we know that from the entrepreneurship literature in terms of real options reasoning, probes into the future, those types of things.